हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू वीडियो लेक्चर सीरीज ऑफ एलेवेंथ क्लास इकोनॉमिक्स इन स्टेटिस्टिक्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू फोकस ऑन चैप्टर नंबर थ्री ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ऑफ डेटा इन दिस चैप्टर वी आर गोइंग टू फोकस ऑन क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ डेटा ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ऑफ डेटा फ्रिक्वेंसी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन एंड टाइप्स ऑफ वेरियस फ्रिक्वेंसी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन सो बिफोर स्टार्टिंग definitely we should try to correlate this chapter with the second one in which we have studied difference we already know that, that there is a difference between census method and sampling method so in this module you will know how the data that you collected are to be classified the purpose of classifying raw data is to bring order in them so that they can be subjected to further statistical analysis easily so now we simply know that how to collect data we know that data can be collected from primary source or secondary source the collected data is very complex and unorganized mass of figures which is very difficult to analyze and interpret so it is known by the name of raw data it is not capable of offering any meaningful conclusion it is just like a lump of clay without any shape or identity so it needs to be organized before these are presented for final observations so what is the meaning of organization it refers to the arrangement of figures in such a form that comparison of the mass of similar data may be facilitated and further analysis may be possible for example it can become more clear by taking a very simple and real life example have you ever observed your local junk dealer or which is also known by the name of kabadi wala to whom you sell your old newspapers broken household items empty glass bottles plastics etc he purchases all these things from you and sells them to those persons who recycle them but with so much junk in his shop it would be very difficult for him to manage his trade so if he had not organized them properly so to erase to ease his situation he suitably groups or classifies various junk he puts old newspapers together and ties them with a rope then he collects all empty glasses and bottles he puts them in a sack he heaps the articles of metals in one corner of the shop and he sorts them into various groups like iron copper aluminum brass and so on so simply we have done the meaning of organization that is organizing or arranging the similar things simply it can be also elaborated by moving further towards classification what is the meaning of classification as the name suggests we are classifying something that means what we are trying to do we are just arranging or organizing similar things into groups or various classes now objectives of classification the first objective is simplification and briefness it appears to be very brief and simple for example data collected during a population census has to be classified according to its age sex marital status and occupation etc utility it brings out similarity within diverse set of data by making it more useful the third important point is distinctiveness it renders obvious differences among the data for example facts like educated uneducated married unmarried they all can be kept in separate classes comparability no doubt classification helps us in doing comparison of various frequencies as well as various variables how for example if we want to compare between the marks of 11th class statistics and the marks of 11th class accounts so we need to classify their marks after classification of their marks it will become more easier to compare 
the next objective is scientific arrangement. It facilitates arrangement of data in a scientific manner which increases their reliability. For example, the characteristics of income and education can be related after classifying data. Attractive and effective. After arranging all kind of data or after classifying all kind of data, it becomes more attractive and it becomes more effective that can be used for the further analysis and for the further statistical inquiry. Now, what are the characteristics of a good classification or it can be done like that only. What are the requirements a good classification system must have? The first one is comprehensive. As the name suggests, all the classification we are doing that must be comprehensive. It means it must try to include each and every aspect without leaving anyone unattended. Second point is clarity. If we are doing any kind of classification, we must know that we are doing it for making data more effective, attractive and simple. So it needs to be more clear. Third one is homogeneity. Homogeneity simply means that we are going to take similar facts or figures in one area and we are going to take another facts in another area. For example, if we want to fix married and unmarried people, they will be segregated accordingly. The next point is suitability. The classification system which we are doing or the data classification must be suitable only to each and everyone or to the analyst. The next one is stability. Stability simply means that if we are doing any kind of classification, it must be like that only. The data must not fluctuate by changing the analysis or the economist. It must remain stable. The last important requirement is elastic. It simply means that the, it must have a kind of absorption capacity in itself so that it can make any kind of modifications and arrangements if they require to be. Now, what are the basis of classification or we can say that types of classification. They are broadly divided into four categories, chronological, geographical, qualitative and quantitative. The first one is chronological classification. Raw data could be classified in various ways depending on the purpose in hand. They can be grouped according to time. Such a classification is known as chronological classification. Data are classified either in ascending or in descending order with a reference to time such as it may be years, quarters, months or weeks etc. It can be further explained with the help of example. In this example, we are talking about population of India on the basis of certain years. In year 1951, it was 35.7 crores, which rose to 68.4 crores in 1981 and 102.7 crores in 2001, which simply tells us that the population is increasing on the basis of certain years. So this kind of classification is known by the name of chronological classification. That means we are classifying our data on the basis of certain years. The next one is geographical classification. It is also known by the name of spatial classification. In this spatial classification, the data are classified with the reference to geographical locations such as countries, states, cities, or it may be districts. For example, yield of wheat for different countries. On one axis, we have taken countries. On another axis, we have taken yield of wheat. For example, if we are talking about America, it was 1925 kg per acre. In Brazil, it is 127. In France, it is 439. And in India, it is 862. So that means we have classified our data on the basis of geographical aspects of various locations or the countries. 
The next one is qualitative classification. Sometimes we come across the characteristics that cannot be expressed quantitatively like characteristics are known by the name of qualities or attributes. For example, nationality, literacy, religion, gender, marital status, etc. They cannot be measured, yet these attributes can be classified on the basis of either the presence or the absence of a qualitative characteristic. Such classification of the data on these attributes is known by the name of qualitative classification. It can also be explained with the help of this flowchart. We have taken population that can be divided into two broader categories, male and female, but can be further divided into married or unmarried male and married and unmarried female. The next type is quantitative classification. As the name indicates, now we are talking about quantities. What is the meaning of quantity which can be measured? For example, characteristics like height, weight, age, income, marks of the students are quantitative in nature. When the collected data of such characteristics are grouped into classes, this type of classification is known as quantitative classification. It can be explained with the help of this example. Frequency distribution of marks in mathematics of 100 students. It can be explained like marks are taken on one axis, frequency is taken on another axis. For example, if we talk about the marks between 0 to 10, that means there is a one student who has scored such a low marks. If we talk about between 60 to 70, there are 19 students who have scored these kind of marks. So, this kind of classification is known by the name of quantitative classification. Now, in conclusion, what we have learned, we have just talked about classification of data, organization of data and we have talked about types of classification. Classification is simply arranging the similar kind of data in various groups. We have talked about geographical classification, we have talked about chronological, quantitative, qualitative and so on. So, in next module, we are going to talk about variable. What is the meaning of variable? We are going to focus on types of variable. We are going to talk about various kinds of series, discrete variable, continuous variable, exclusive series, inclusive series, open-ended series, midpoint series and so on. Then we are going to talk about frequency distribution in detail and univariate and bivariate analysis. So, in the meanwhile, keep reading and thank you.